Hi there ladies and gents, boys and girls, it's Frosty Jack here. I hope you're all well and enjoying yourselves. So today we're going to start it out in the 2x4 and we've got the lemon tree pheno hunt going on in here. And it is currently day 7 of flower for these ladies. And well, I've got to say guys and girls, um, yeah I'm pretty damn happy with how these ladies are looking. Um, they're all super happy and, and super healthy um, and this this runt in particular or the one that was uh, a damn sight smaller than the others is just looking amazing absolutely amazing and as far as uh, how their shape or their their frames are starting to develop all in all there isn't a great deal of difference between them um, these from numbers uh, one through to four um, they're almost identical. It's only number five that's slightly different. And from what you can see on number five, that's the difference is this lateral branching. Um, there is, you know, a few factors here to take into account. Now, um, that particular one, Sophenotype number five, was only topped once, whereas all the others were topped twice. Um, so that will make a difference because obviously they've got more tops on them than than that one has. Um, so yeah, that is going to make a difference to your lateral branching. Um, how much? Yeah, probably actually quite a big difference to be honest. So, I guess if I were to stick it across the board and had done exactly the same thing and top them all exactly the same, you'd probably see, you know, um, see them all looking relatively the same, apart from number five being a bit of a runt and and not as vigorous as the others. That doesn't mean to say that it's um, it's going to be crap. Um, it's just, you know, you just have difference. Some are slower than others, some are a bit more squatty. Um, I definitely think the, um, the internodal spacing is a bit tighter on number five. But again, not by any notable difference. Um, so as far as the thrip situation goes, um, well, you know, I thought... I had a feeling I was getting on top of it, and to a degree, kind of still yeah kind of still on top of it um i've found a few adults again this week um which is a bit of a pain in the ass so obviously they're still about and they're still larvae about and all of that kind of crap um so um all that being said um i really what i need to do and it's not that the predatory mites don't work um the predatory mites have definitely done a done a great job in keeping the numbers back and what have you um, but unfortunately my conditions of the environment in here isn't always uh, or for the most part not favorable for them to be able to breed and what have you so you know eventually the numbers will dwindle die what have you um, and the the pests can then thrive again i.e the thrip um, and unfortunately to reapply um, these predatory mites um, it can be quite expensive um, I mean I would have said I've spent in the best part of about 100 maybe 120 quid on predatory mites in the past few months um, so well, I say past few months but obviously on the last run we had threat problem as well and you know I was playing with them then you know, don't get me wrong, uh, some of the, the mites will stay around, uh, especially the, the ones that live in the soil, the predators that live in the soil, um, the, the mighty mite and the amblyus, um, no, not the concurious, oh, I can't remember the bloody name of it now, um, but another popular predatory mite as well, uh, Hypoaspis Hy miles, um, they will stay and live in the soil and you can, those conditions are quite easy to provide for them, um, but for these other little mites like the Swarovski and what have you, um, yeah, you need the right conditions for them to breed, um, so anyway, sorry, I'm rambling a lot about that. The whole point I'm getting to here is it's quite expensive to do this and a dime site more expensive, uh, inexpensive um, to use uh, insecticidal soaps and a few other bits and pieces, i.e. neem or neem oils um, or hot spices, peppers, what have you. Um, there's a few different remedies for it. So I have already been given a recipe to um, by a good friend uh, to, uh, I think it was neem and seaweed and a few bits and pieces to eradicate the thrip. Um, I was also sent over a soy a soybean, I think it was soybean mix as well to, um, to get rid of the uh, thrip larvae. Um, the reason why I didn't use those is because I, w I didn't want to harm a the larvae um, for the for the beneficial 
predators. Um, but I also wanted to see what effect these guys would have it keeping the numbers down and whether and whether it would work on a one-time hit. Clearly it's not going to work on a one-time hit and you need to keep reapplying over and over again. Again, another learning curve for me, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's quite an expensive way to go about it. So as a prevention method, yeah, I, I reckon these, these would definitely have their place. Um, but um, but uh, as a... Um, not a prevention, but as a, an eradication method, um, these guys just aren't cutting it, or in my opinion, as of yet. Maybe they would, maybe they would if I had the money to keep buying them over and over again, but I really don't. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to go down the insecticidal soap route and also use that soybean um, to get rid of these bloody thrips. Because another thing, they're across the whole of my garden now, so they're not just in here. They've managed to make their way across to every single tent in my garden. So um, yeah, I'm just going to have to treat the whole lot and really keep a sustained treatment going for the next month or so. Obviously, time is limited on here because these are going to be throwing flowers soon. And um, I'd rather let the thrips eat the fucking leaves and spray neem and stuff over my flowers so um so yeah um that is what's going on with that situation um but yeah apart from that it is um like i say day seven in here and they're all looking really bloody healthy so happy with that over to the other two by two and we have now got the orange juice in here and uh, basically trying this new method of, um, of using these deco or these compost compostable, um, they're kind of like wood chip um, pots, as you can see. Um, I know it's a bit of a jungle in here, so it's kind of hard <laughs> to figure out. I need to cut all of this down, but I just haven't got a chance at the moment. Um, so, yeah, um, I need... Uh, so basically, what the plan is, is just to put these on the soil, which I have done, just rest them in there in contact with the soil, and their roots, in theory, should fire on down, and they should root into this bed, and, you know, just grow as as usual. That way, you're not not having to dig holes into your into your bed, and just makes it a bit more no-till. So that is what's happening there, that's what I'm trying. As you can see, um, we've got a little issue in here of the um, of the bloody wood lice, and that's what I can only assume they are. I can't see any caterpillars or anything like that that, would, um, that, are, that are chewing away in here. So I would only assume that it's the bloody wood lice, hungry wood lice coming up here and gnawing on the plants a bit. Um, never really had this much of, a, of an issue, um, but, um, but if they do start to become a big issue, um, then obviously I'm going to have to do something about it and knock their numbers back a bit. I love to have these pill bugs or these wood louse in here. Um, they do a fantastic job of breaking down the organic matter, um, you know, all the leaves and bits of stem and all of that crap. They do a fantastic job at breaking that down. And they also um, help clean the soil of heavy metals as well. They, they, they store things like lead and bits and pieces. They eat it and store it in their midgut. Um, so yeah, that's another uh, good or benefit of having uh, having the pill bugs or wood louse kicking around. Um, but their numbers do explode in somewhere like here. They they will nibble on a plant or two. Um, you know they are partial to uh, a bit of the old Mary Jane. So um, so yeah, you just have to watch them. And I don't I don't think it's something that you you, you know you absolutely don't want in your garden. Or as far as I can tell. Um, because I've had them in there in my gardens for about a year, year and a half now uh, in my living soil pots and not really had any major issues. They just get a few a bit peckish from time to time. Um, but uh, but yeah, all in all, everything looking pretty damn good. Again, we've got the blue mat system in here and we're running the uh, FC3000 overkill light in here. Um, again, I don't know if these are actually rooted into the soil yet. They've only been here, uh, I don't know, uh, three or four days. So they're possibly getting there, um, but I just dumped them in there because I wanted to uh, get a bit more space in the veg tent and I just wanted to get them settled in really. Um, so yeah, that's what's happening in there. 
Over to the other 2x2, two two, we got the Migro Array 2 in here, hands down the best light for a 2x2, two two. Um, or this, this Migro Array 2 is the perfect light for a 2 but it's beautiful, I highly recommend that, and I think I mention that every bloody week, and no, I'm not paid by them, I just, I, I just highly recommend this, it's great, great for its money, and it's just a fantastic light. Um, yeah, anyway, down to the planty hose, we have got in here the 2 Skywalker Kush, um, now they're looking okay as you can see we're getting a little bit of a, a fade on a little bit of a senescence or something happening here I say senescence, senescence but obviously they've got um, a little bit of a few deficiencies showing shall we say um, which isn't the end of the world and um, we'll bounce those back um, they're not overly happy in here but they're not you know that's not the end of the world I know they will pick up and bounce back um, as you can see I have pinched the, the tops off um, in order basically to be able to get some cuttings um, obviously because this is another pheno hunt going on here so yeah this is Skywalker Kush from Reserva Prada and uh, yeah um, they're yeah doing well so far just looking forward to uh, looking forward to seeing the progression on those anyway over to the 3x3 and we've got the Migro Array 3 in here and the orange juice and it is day 21 of flowering here for these ladies and well I've got to say guys and girls um, it is looking pretty damn good in here uh, unfortunately uh, we have got a few holes in this canopy could have done a better job with filling that um, but all in all you know I'm not going to complain too much um, it's looking pretty good and the girls are looking super healthy too uh, also, as you can see, we did come through here last week and really give them a good clean-up. I was saying last week that I wasn't going to go too heavy, especially in terms, in terms of defoliation. Um, I wasn't even really going to bother touching, do, doing a defoliation. I was just going to uh, just do a bit of a lollipop, um, but I went harder than uh, initially expected. And as you can see, gave them a real good clean-up and also did that defoliation too and just left... Um, well at the time the main top three but obviously they've grown a bit now so we've got like four or five leaves coming out the top um, and yeah just really opened up that canopy allowed a lot more airflow a lot more light penetration um, and they were just a lot happier for it uh, one of the main reasons I did that defoliation when I did it was a because the scrog net was that wasn't in there at the time um, and I could have all the plants out and uh, yeah, also, it was just um, the plants were on, on point. They were looking so happy and so healthy um, that, um, that I had the option to do it and, and know that they wouldn't be stressed too much. And if you can look at these stems, I don't know if it's, quite, if it's clear enough on the, on the camera. You can see there's no purple streaking, no signs of stress. And like I said before, the orange juice, if she gets stressed, is prone to streaking and, and going purple. So you can tell that there's going to be no stress in there. She's just, yeah, looking super, super happy and super healthy. Um, so looking forward to seeing how these ladies develop over the next uh, over the next few weeks. Obviously, a stretch is done now, day 21. Um, we'll be looking into, you know, flower formation now. They'll be focusing more on their flower development and elongation and... and uh, basically enlarging enlargement of their uh, of their flowers um, but yeah everything looking pretty damn good in here absolutely love this array three fantastic fixture anyway last but not least the veg tent so what is going on in the veg tent so obviously we've got the after dinner breath mum over here pretty much decided now i'm not going to be running the after dinner breath um, again, I didn't bring any flour through to show you this week, unfortunately, so I do apologise for that. I will bring some flour through though, um, because I know it's nice to see the finished product. Um, very often on my channel you see it grown, but you never actually see the finished product. Um, and you don't oh, very often get a smoke report either, so um, I do apologise for that, it's just something I'm not very good at. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, uh, we've got after dinner breath there, that's, um, that's destined for the bin really. Or, or for someone's garden, but um, not mine. Uh, orange juice mum down there, another orange juice mother over there. Um, the cuts of the lemon tree in there. Um, so I only potted those up this morning. Um, they rooted, they took about 14 days to root, which was absolutely fine, but they all chucked roots at about the same time, which was really great to see. Makes life so much easier. So obviously they're going to stay in the prop dome for a couple of days, and I'm just going to start hardening them off, and then eventually I'll lift the lid up, and uh, away we go. 
got two orange juice mothers down in here in these again these um these wood chip oh, i think they're called wood chip pots they might be cocoa but it said wood chip on the on the um on the label of them um i've got to admit uh i'm not a massive fan of these pots um, I love the fact that they're compostable and all of that, they're El Naturel. Um, to be honest, my plastic pots, I reuse them over and over and over again. I had them for years, um, so that isn't an issue. The only time I lose them is when I give them to people. Um, so in terms of that, I reuse my stuff, so it's not like I'm chucking it away. Um, but I wanted to try and use these just to, you know, for transplanting sake, make it easier and what have you. Um, but they just don't seem to retain moisture very well they seem to dry out ever so quickly um and to be perfectly honest the plants don't look all that happy in there it's like i have to keep giving them water daily um so yeah they are struggling a bit in there but you know it is what it is they're the two new orange juice mothers i know they look a bit shit at the moment but they will come back and they will look a lot better so i'm not too worried about that uh, once we get them into their final homes we're probably, go probably going into these um these 3.8 liter pots or four litre pots basically um, that's where they'll be going and I'll be keeping both of those so I can have um, two mothers just to rotate in terms of taking cuttings from and over here um, this is not really much to do with the, our general garden update so you won't really see these ladies or I say these ladies but these things after um, after probably after today really um, and what we've got down here are four basil so four different um, Four pots of just basil seeds basically i just put a load of seeds in there to germinate them um, and obviously i'll just pluck out what i don't want and then these 10 over here are a mixture of different lettuce um, basically this is all for my uh, outside outdoor garden um, whether these ladies or i keep saying ladies but whether these plants will actually go out i don't know as yet because my bed's actually full at the moment my raised bed's now full of lettuce and spring onions and all those good things um so i don't actually know what i'm going to do with this i might just have to find some space outside and just chuck them in we'll see see how it goes see how things progress um i just got carried away with um planting this stuff the missus wanted some basil um as far as the lettuce goes why i put 10 lettuce in at once i don't know because there's only two of us and we aren't going to eat 10 lettuce in one fucking week so and obviously they're all going to be ready at the same time so yeah um yeah but just playing around with vegetables really guys and girls um so that's all that's going on in there anyway um sorry about the rambling this week i have been rambling on quite a bit um hopefully next week i'll have um a bit of a better chat um something i did want to mention actually that i forgot about obviously did, did the top dressing i don't know if i did the top dressing this week just gone possibly um but i'll run over that next week because we're quite towards the end of the video um but i have used sawdust again for the mulch layer in here and this is off of um quite an old beech tree um and the fungal life in that is is immense especially with beech i've always found that there's a hell of a lot of fungal life going on on, on old beech wood so uh so yeah i thought i'd use that as a bit of a mulch layer and, and see what happens um but the cover crop is still busting on through i've obviously broke up the cover crop but uh but it's coming back through again anyway ladies and gents rambling again um thank you ever so much for watching please like subscribe if you haven't already uh, enjoy the rest of your week and we'll be back next week with another little update anyway guys and girls bye for now